number 15 from the 2013 advanced tyre. There we go, the three dimensional geometry, three dimensional vectors question. First part for four marks, get the equation of plane given three points. Well, that should be straightforward because that's just a case of to get the equation of plane, I need a point on it and the normal vector to it. That's enough to specify it completely. Well, to get the direction vector, the normal vector, I'll need to use these defined a couple of vectors that lie on the plane. So AB lies on the plane, that would be B minus A, if I want to spell it all out, 1, 0, 3, take away the 0, negative 1, 3, and any other one AC would do. So C minus A, 0, 0, 5, and 0, negative 1, 3. So what does that come to? Just being careful with all these wee bits of microarithmetic. So easy to slip up somewhere with a sign or a number. 1 take away 0, 1. Take away negative 1, 1. 3 take away 3, 0. That's nice and small. 0 take away 0, 0. Take away negative 1, positive 1. 5 take away 3, 2. So that the normal to the plane can be found by taking the vector product of these two. If those are vectors that lie on the plane, then the vector product will give me a vector perpendicular to them both, perpendicular to the plane. So for that part, <coughs> I'll set out the determinant, i, j, k, with 1, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 2. I'll just put this over here. So for the i, I would have 2 take away 0, minus j. For the j, I would have 2 take away 0, and for the k, I would have 1 take away 0. So that's going to give me 2i minus 2j plus k. I'll just pop this back over here into column vector form. So 2, negative 2, 1. And you can't get any nicer than that, so I'm quite happy with that. I can't have fewer negatives, and I can't cancel it down any. Then the last part would be, so what's the equation of this plane pi 1? Well, the normal vector... The scalar product of that with the position vector of any point in the plane will be that normal vector times the position vector of any of these given points. They all lie in the plane, I can use any of them, so I'll use those two. So that says that I've got 2, negative 2, 1 times any point. We'll give the same answer as 2, negative 2, 1 times a specific point. It would actually be better if I'd used that one now. It's too late, I've said A. So that I've got, I'm going out of space here, 2x minus 2y plus z equals, that's 0, that's a 2, that's a 3, that comes to 5. So there it is. That would be the equation of the plane containing these three points. And you can always check that quickly just by putting these three numbers in and checking that each time it comes to 5. So in part B, you have to just do the same thing again and get two marks this time, only you're given the normal vector to the plane. So it's just the same as before. If that's the normal vector to the plane and that's a point on it, then I know that n dot any point on it will be n dot any given point. So I'll just put this back carefully. There's no i. Don't be joking there somewhere. Negative 1, 1 times x, y, z will be 0, negative 1, 1 dot 0, negative 1, 3. So I've got negative y plus z equals 1 and 3 is 4. But unsatisfactory having that wee negative there. But no matter what you do, somebody's got to have it. A wee bit of a hot potato. And then part C, determine the acute angle between the two planes. And I've kept the equations here. How about that straightforward enough? The angle between the planes will be the same as the angle between their normals. Because as the planes rotate, their normals must rotate by the same amount. I'll just take a note again. Plane 1, 2, negative 2, 1 for its normal vector. Plane 2, 0, negative 1, 1. And we'll just... Oh, another note, let theta equal the angle between the planes. Between planes pi 1 
and pi 2. Or maybe I should have said the acute angle. And then that's just the same as you did in the higher. The cosine of that angle will be, from the scalar product, n1 dot n2 divided by the length of n1 times the length of n2. Now, that could turn out to be positive or negative. If it turns out to be positive, you've found the acute angle. If it turns out to be negative, you've found the obtuse angle. Because when two lines cross, you've got a choice of two angles between them. To guarantee that you're always picking out the acute one, a simple thing to do is take the absolute value. If it's necessary, I'll put it there just now. So if it turns out to be negative, you just ignore that part and that'll guarantee that you get the acute one. So what I've got, so I'll just stick with the absolute value just now of it. So the scalar product, that'll be two times zero. I'll just put them in little brackets. A negative two times a negative one for the y components and a one times a one for the z components over the square roots of, and I'll just square them as I go, four and four and one, I know that's nine, that's three, but I'll just put it down. Four and four and one, nothing and one and one. So I've got for the top, I've got a two and a one, which is three over, and that's three and that's root two. Oh here, that's nice, so I don't need these absolute values anymore, it's turned out to be positive. And that's the same as, that means that the cosine is going to be 1 upon root 2, and you know 1 upon root 2, that's 45 degrees. So theta equals 45 degrees, pi upon 4 in radians if you want, but 45 degrees seems quite a nice answer.